Hallelujah. Good to see you out this morning. A couple of people that haven't been here for a while, we're glad that you're here. And we ask that the Lord will bless you this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You glad to be in God's house? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you would turn with me to Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter. Now, how many of you like, like buffets? Anybody here like buffets? Maybe you go to the Golden Crown, used to anyway. Uh, before all this stuff happened, let's put it that way. Before all this stuff happened, how many like buffets? Uh, I mean, nowadays, they're like, no, oh, no, I can't go there. A lot of them uh, are going out of business because of uh, this thing. But, but most people like buffets. Why? Because it has a whole lot of different things to eat, right? You can just go there and you know, pick out this, that, and everything else. There's so much to eat, so much delicious food to, to have. And um, really, that's how we ought to look at the Word of God. Yeah. Amen? We ought to look at it like that. Because it is a buffet. And God does call us to eat thereof. In Deuteronomy, the 8th chapter, verse 3, it says, Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone, Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. He did it because we got to know that we do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The title this morning is, The Word of God Sustains Us. The Word of God Sustains Us. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I ask, Lord, that you would help me as your minister. Allow the Holy Spirit to work through me, Lord God, and into the hearts of each and every one today. I pray, Lord, that he makes the point. Not that I make any points, because what I say doesn't really matter. It's what he wants to say into the hearts of people. It's let us hear what the Spirit has to say, the Bible says. So I pray, Lord, use me as an instrument that the Holy Spirit may use to touch me and minister to the hearts and lives of each and every one. God, I pray, Lord God, touch us and minister to your congregation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. E.W. Bollinger said, The root of all evils, which abounds in the spiritual sphere at the present day, lies in the fact that the word and the words of God are not fed upon digested and assimilated as they ought to be. If we ask, he goes on to say, if we ask the question, why is this the case? The answer is the Bible's not enjoyed because the Bible's not understood. Now he's writing in the latter part of the 18th, uh, 1800s or the, um, the 19th century. He's writing then, not now, he's not writing in the present day. He wrote that over a hundred, you know, a hundred and almost 50 years, 120 or 30 years ago, he wrote that. And I agree with a good portion of that, but there are some things I disagree with there, but I think the quotes are good because it gets us to think. There are a couple of things though that I believe that he has a little bit wrong. That not reading the Bible is not the root of all evils because sin and Satan is the root of all evil. Yeah. Okay? And also that the people, um, when it says that the Bible is not enjoyed because the Bible is not understood, I believe the, Bible, the people don't understand the Bible nor enjoy it because they don't realize that the Holy Spirit that brought them to salvation and that empowers them to live for Christ is the same one that gives us the joy and the understanding of the words that we read in it. 
See, that's the problem. It's not that people don't uh, understand it so they don't enjoy it. It's that they don't understand it nor enjoy it because they don't realize it's the Holy Spirit that does the work, not them themselves. We and our intellect cannot understand the Bible. There's a lot of people who want to read it and say, this is what the Bible says. Well, I'm here to tell you that just because you, you look at the Bible and say, this is what it says, doesn't mean that's what it says. You better ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate that scripture in your heart and make it known to you the way God wants it made known. Because there's been a whole lot of people have taken the word of God out of context and used it for whatever they wanted. Made doctrines up, did all kinds of things because they said this is what the word of God says. So we got to understand that we enjoy the Bible and we understand the Bible through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit. That Satan say, well, how in the world am I going to get him to do anything, you know, to let him do that? Well, he works in you. He works in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. If you are a Christian, if you are born again, believer of God, then you have the Holy Spirit in you. And that same Spirit, as the Scripture said, that raised Christ from the dead, rises up within us. And that same spirit illuminates the holy word of God so that we can not only understand it, but that we can enjoy it, right? We can enjoy it. Now, I do believe that, that not reading the Bible is an offshoot of the root of evil. I believe it is the, one of the causes from the root of evil, from sin, from Satan. I believe Satan doesn't want you to read the Bible. Satan doesn't want you to have anything to do with the Bible. Satan wants you to throw your Bible on the shelf and put it under a bunch of other stuff and leave it alone. Don't ever look at it. Don't ever read it. Don't ever listen to anything about it until you come to church on Sunday if you do. That's what he wants. So it's an offshoot of that root of evil. It is, you know how roots come down? You got the main root and you got a bunch of branches. Well, that's one of the branches of the roots of evil. And that today is why a lot of people don't read the Bible is because sin is still prevailing in our world. Sin is still prevailing. The Christian should hear the voice of the Holy Spirit as he calls him, because he's calling us to a feast. As I said, this is a buffet. This is a, this is a world of food, a, a, a whole table full of food waiting to be digested, waiting for us to take and have some for ourselves. And the Holy Spirit calls us. He calls us and says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Now, when my wife calls, you know, when she gets done dinner, when she's got it all prepared and ready, she says, hey, Frank, come. Dinner's ready. You know, usually I'm in the other room or doing something. And she says, hey, Frank, dinner's ready. And I don't just lay there. I don't just sit there or I don't just keep doing what I'm doing, right? No, I don't. I get up as soon as she said dinner's ready. I get up and I go and I get there, you know, and, and fill my plate or sit down, and do whatever, and I eat the food that she has prepared for me. See, I do that because my wife will get off my if I don't. <laughs> but no, I go because you know she's prepared it. She's laid it out for me. She's done all that work, and I want to eat it then. Well, why don't we run to the Bible when the Holy Spirit calls us to dinner? When he calls us and says, hey, you know, you haven't read the Bible lately. You haven't opened up the Word lately. You need to get into the Word of God. There's something there for you. See, we say, God, why aren't you talking to me? Why don't you say something? Why don't you listen to me? Why don't you do this, God? Why don't you show me this? And he says, I've already done all that here, written between these pages. It's there for you if you'll just look. Amen? If you just look. Now, the reason why we don't run when the Holy Spirit tells us and calls us to dinner is either we have gotten to the place where we have no desire to eat or we have filled ourselves up with all kinds of other junk that we're full, that we're not hungry, right? Right? I mean, if I sit there and eat a bunch of snacks before dinner, and then my wife calls me to dinner, I'm not really in the mood to eat dinner. That's why I never do that, because she would get angry at me. 
No, but she put all that work to it. You know, I want to make sure I'm not eating a bunch of junk before I go to dinner. And if I have eaten a late lunch, I'll tell her, say, sweetheart, I ate a really late lunch and I'm, you know, I'm not even hungry for dinner, so don't even fix me anything. Just if you fix whatever you want and I'm fine. And really I've lost, I've really lost the desire to eat. I have, I just, I don't care to eat or not eat. I told my wife, you know what? If they could put a food into a pill and I could take it for meals, I'd take a pill and forget about eating. Because eating is a waste of time. You know, it's just a waste of time. I just, you know, I don't enjoy sitting down for the most part. I don't enjoy sitting down and eating a meal. To me, it just takes up time. I don't like that. I just, you know, it doesn't, I don't, some people just enjoy it. They sit down and man, they just enjoy cutting into a nice piece of steak or even grabbing a hot dog with mustard and, and relish and, and onions on it, you know, and they savor that. I mean, there's some times when I do. There's some times when I'll, you know, I'll smell, my wife will make uh, shrimp, you know, and a shrimp creole for me sometimes, especially on my birthday. She'll ask me what I want. Usually I want shrimp creole. So she'll make that for me, and, and I can smell it, you know, and my mouth begins to water, and I'm really, I want it. I, you know, I'm hungry for it, and I want it. But most of the time, I just don't care. I, she says, what do you want to eat? I said, whatever you got, baby. She said, come on, you're making it hard for me. I said, no, I'm not. You got the whole world. Pick from what you want. I'm not hard to please. Just feed me. You know, if you're going to cook something, just cook. It doesn't matter to me. You know, and, uh, but she said, oh, come on. You just, you need to tell me what you want. Yeah, I don't care. If you don't want to fix nothing, that's good too. You know, I'll grab whatever is in the refrigerator, whatever leftover. Sometimes I'll just take some mac and cheese and throw it in the microwave that we had the night before and I'll cook it up and that's what I'll have for dinner. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever fills my gut and gets it done, that's okay with me. But that's how a lot of people are with the Word of God. It's like they just lost their hunger for it. They've lost their desire to eat. They've lost their desire to enjoy sitting down at the table and looking at the spread and saying, Oh, God, thank you for all that you have given to me. Thank you, Lord. See, we need to do that. And... and we need to be hungry for the word. We need to be desiring the word of God. So where's the hunger that God's people should have for the word? The scripture in our text says, yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. And he did this to teach them that they don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. See, he did that on purpose. He, he allowed them to go hungry. You know, they walked through the wilderness and they got hungry. They ran out of food. Now, you're in the desert for 40 years, you know, you're going to run out of food. And they left Egypt with a lot of stuff. But they began to run out of stuff because they weren't supposed to wander in the desert for 40 years. They were supposed to go through the desert in a few weeks, a month or so, and then get to the promised land and enter in. But because of their disobedience, because of their lack of faith, they didn't enter in. And so they ran out of food and God waited. He humbled them to hunger so that they would get fed by the manna which was sent from heaven down to them. They hadn't tasted before. See, the Bible is something new to you. If you're just a, you're a new Christian or you haven't been a Christian for very long, the Bible's new to you. But I'm telling you, if you don't get into it, if you don't eat it, if you don't partake of it, if you don't look through the pages and search it out and taste and see, then you're missing something. And you're going to have a bad spiritual diet and you will feel bad. You will feel fatigued. You will feel like you, uh, you don't know why then you feel so bad inside spiritually. It's because you haven't been opening up the word of God. Because you haven't looked into its pages. Because you haven't feasted upon the things that God has for each and every one of us to partake of it. Burke Parsons said this, Scripture is the foundation for all we believe. And the fountain from which we daily drink. It is the foundation for all that we believe. And it is the fountain from which we daily, see daily drink, Amen. And we also see this picture in the wilderness when God let them get thirsty. 
Right? They got thirsty. They said, God, you're going to let us die out here in the wilderness. You're going to let us die out here. We, we don't have any uh, water to drink. And water is essential to the human body. You can go without food for quite a while. But you can't go without water for a while. You can't. And so they cried out to God, and what did he do? He sent water from heaven. Amen? He sent water from heaven. He told Moses, they hit the rock, and the rock split open. Who was that rock? The Bible says that Jesus was the rock that followed them in the wilderness. God sent the water through the rock to the people so that they could have something to drink. Why did he do that? So that they would know that the true water of life comes from him comes from him. Amen? He's the one. He's the one that gives us the water of life. The Bible is the words and the word of God. All that sustains us come from the words and the word of God. And we can't believe that the Bible contains the word of God. We must also believe that it is the word of God. Not just that it contains the Word of God, but that it is the very Word of God. Some people believe that it contains the Word of God, right? There are people who just believe that it is. It just contains it. There are bits and pieces in here that actually represent God, and then the rest of it is just history and different things that were thrown in there. But if you believe that, then you're mistaken, because the Bible says that this is the inspired the inerrant, the inexhaustible, amen, word of God. It is, right? People say that the Bible is just a bunch, a bunch of man's words. It is not. It is the word of God. The word of God tells us that it is. So if you believe that this Bible is the word of God, then you must also believe that it is the words of God. Scripture in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Unto all good works. Amen? So the scripture there tells us that. And then 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21 says, Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in scripture came ever or ever came from the prophet's own understanding. Do you hear that? Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. They spoke from God. You say, well, man wrote it. Yes, man wrote it, but they were speaking from God. This is the words of God, as if God was speaking them, they were given to us. They're not all the words of God, because the Bible says that the, the, there would not be books enough to hold what Christ has done. If God wanted to tell you everything that Christ did, he wouldn't have enough books in the world to be able to hold the, what he has done. So it's not everything, but it is the word. It is the one that he has sent to us. It is the message that he wants us to hear. Not all things are revealed to us. Some things will be revealed later to us. But everything that he wants us to know is right here between these pages. Everything. Amen? And if you don't believe that, if you do not believe that it, just, it doesn't just contain the word of God, but that it is the word of God, then throw it away and trash it and go on living life the way you want to live it. And a lot of people have done that. Quite a few people have done that. They've just said, you know what, the Bible's nothing. I don't, you know, I don't care for it. I'm just going to live whatever way I want to live. People who profess to be Christians, people who profess to be religious, will say, you know what, it contains some of the word, but, you know, others is just man's thoughts, man's things. And they have just laid it aside. They have trashed it. They have thrown it away, so to speak. And they've gone about living the way they want to live instead of the way God wants us to live. So you say, well, how does God want me to live? What does God want me to do? It's written in the book. It's written in the book. They look at the Bible as no more than a good book to read. 
Is that what, how you see it? Is that how you see this book? Just a good book to read? Because if it is, then you're looking at it wrong. They practice religion, but they know nothing about a true faith in a living, living, breathing God. That's true. Amen? They know nothing about it. They have no interaction with God himself. So when we get into the book, we are interacting with God. It's like we're sitting down and God speaking into our heart what he wants us to say. To them, God is nothing more than an add-on, an ornament, a brooch, or a piece of jewelry that they wear. Show it off when they need to and put it up when they don't. I'm telling you, we're living in a world, all you gotta do is listen to the TV and you can hear a lot of that. People pull out God just like they pull out, you know, look, my badge says I'm, I'm a Christian. That doesn't make you a Christian. You can pull out all the badges you want, you can proclaim all you want, but unless you know the word, unless you know the person that's in this word, amen, unless you know he who wrote this word, he who spoke this word, then you're not a Christian. You're just a religious person. And God don't need more religious people. Believe me, the world don't need more religious people. The world needs more godly people. The world needs more people who say, I want to live by this word. Amen? Don't just say you know God. Live like you know God. Amen? Live like you know God. If God is our everything, then his words should be that which we hunger and thirst for. If God is your everything, is he your everything? Because if he's not your everything, he's not your nothing. He's your, he's your nothing if he's not your everything. God won't take second place and he won't take peace. He won't allow you to just take a piece of him. You either take all of God or you take none of God. Amen? You understand that? You're either going to have everything of God or none. You need the hunger. We need the thirst after the word of God. The Bible says if we hunger and thirst, and the scripture goes on to say after righteousness, but if we hunger and thirst, then we shall be filled. We shall be filled. Filled with what? Filled with that manna from heaven. Filled with that word that comes down from above. Filled with that word that not only will satisfy us, but sustain us, will give us health, will give us strength, will give us joy. Amen? I believe that there's times when the Holy Spirit will stop calling us. He'll stop. You know, if, if my wife kept making dinner and she kept calling me and said, hey, dinner's ready, and I never showed up, how long do you think it would be before she'd stop making dinner and stop calling me? And it wouldn't take very long, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> it wouldn't take very long. And you know what? God will, will work with us. He will do everything. He will have the Holy Spirit calling us and calling us. But there will come a time when he'll just lead us to our own thing. And he will let us be humbled to hunger. He will let us be humbled to hunger. Until we get to that place where we are so hungry that we will either go out and get satisfied somewhere else or we will look to the word for our diet or for our food, for our substance. Once we get to that place where we're humble, once we get to that place where we're hungry, God in his mercy and his, his compassion will feed us, will let us feast upon it. But only when we get to that place, because as long as you're satisfied the way you are, and satisfied with what you got, satisfied with what you're feeding yourself, You'll never go to this word. You'll never get into this word. This word is special. This word is something you're great, and we ought to treat it like that. We ought to treat it like it's just a piece of dessert that we can take or leave. When I go to the restaurant, you know, when we go to the restaurant, you know, I very seldom ever eat dessert. You know why? Because I fill up on the other food. I fill up on the good food, right? I, I can't remember the last time I ordered dessert at a restaurant. One, it usually costs too much, but two, I'm filled up with all the other stuff that I don't need dessert. But if you go, now, it used to be, and there's times, sometimes, especially at picnics when Brother Melvin's angel food cake is there, and I know people are gonna start it up fast, I'll eat dessert first. <laughs> I'll have just one slice of it, 
you know, and then eat my food. But if you just eat a bunch of dessert before dinner, you won't be so much hungry for dinner. If you're feeding on everything else, you won't be hungry for the word. You won't be hungry for the word. And I'm imploring you, please, please, read the word, seek the word. Get to the place where you enjoy the word. I don't want people to raise their hand. Don't raise your hand at all. But how many got a Bible here today, huh? How many carry their Bible to church? How many, you know, even know where their Bible's at? We need to read the Word because it's the Word that brings us joy. Amen? It brings us hope for tomorrow. The Word of God sustains us through every trial, through every trouble, through every heartache and every sorrow. The Word of God does that. You say, how can I make this? I don't know how I can make this. I'm telling you, the way you make it is by getting into the Word, by hearing what the loving Father has to say to you because He loves you, He cares for you, and He has a word for those who are going through that valley. He has a word for those whose heart is, hearts are broken. He has a word for those who need healing. He has a word for those who need deliverance. He has a word for those who need salvation. He has a word, and you're not looking to see what that word is for you. The Word of God reveals the Word of God. Do you hear me? The Word of God reveals the Word of God. John 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. See, the whole Bible, the words of God, are there to reveal the Word of God which is Jesus Christ himself. Now I want to read two scriptures to show us that before we close. Sister Dora, if you get ready. John 6, 47 and 51. I tell you the truth, Jesus speaking. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. In John 4, 13 and 14 says, Jesus answered and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will, come be, uh, will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The Bible is a story about Jesus from front to back. Every scripture in here is for some way related to the word of God. Amen? It is a picture of the one who came to sacrifice his life for you. It's a picture of what he would do, how he would do it, and the end result of what he has done. It is a picture of your salvation, of my salvation. It is a picture of your deliverance, of your sanctification. It is a picture of all the sacrifices that have gone forth. And all you have to do is read the words that are between these pages. Amen? Amen. Read the words. Jesus, the word, is the bread of life, and he is that fountain of water that ever springs up within us. Let us stand if we would, please. Let us stand. If you don't know Christ, if you really don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can open this book up and there'll be a whole bunch of nice stories for you to read. And that's all you'll get. You'll just get a whole bunch of stories that are nice to read. But if you know him, if you have the Holy Spirit in you because of that knowledge of knowing him, then when you open this page and you ask God, God, let the Holy Spirit reveal this to me, it'll all begin to stand out. It'll begin to make sense. It'll all begin to go together. You will understand portions that you never understood before. Why? Because he wants you to see it. He wants you to enjoy it. He wants you to know how much he loves you. This is a love letter from God. And he wants you to hear his words. The only way you can do that 
is by getting in the book. By getting in the book. I'm telling you, you've got to get in, and especially in the day we're living, you got to get in the book. Because there's a whole bunch of junk going on out there, and there's a whole bunch of words going to spit around, and people will say this and that and everything else, but I'm telling you what, you take it to the Word, and you look in there and see if it's the truth or not. Because if it doesn't fit into this Word, then it's not true. It is not true. If it doesn't fit with what God has said, it's not true. It's a lie. Don't believe it. But if it's in the Word, and the Word confirms it, then stand on it and believe it to be true. Dora, you got a song for us? Let's worship the Lord for a moment. If you don't know Christ as Savior, bow your heads and just ask Him to be your Savior. Ask Him to forgive you your sins and ask Him to come into your life this morning. God wrote this out to us. It's, like I said, it's a love letter to us. And it's good to, I listen to preachers on the radio. I listen to, I have apps that have preaching and teaching on them. And I listen to watch preachers on TV sometimes, not many times, but a few times. So I enjoy those. One, because, you know, I'm up here preaching most of the time and I don't get to hear a lot, so I get that and try to feed myself in that way. But it still doesn't take the place of reading the Bible myself. How many of you if your sweetheart, your wife or husband, whomever, you know, you're, you're away, and they, like when I was used to, when I was in boot camp, you know, in Paris Island, I loved it when I got letters. Now, they didn't give us any letters for the first half of the time we were there, but I loved it that we got letters. I loved hearing from the people that I loved to write to me. I loved it when I was over in Okinawa that I got letters from people, and we're able to correspond that way. That was back in the time when they didn't have all these computers. That'd been great, you know, if it was then now. But it was good to get stuff, you get a letter and be able to read it. When I was in college, the same thing. I'd get letters, you know, my wife would send me letters, you know, to me, and it was nice getting them and reading them. I saw God saved. And I wouldn't think, about having somebody else getting on the TV or the radio and reading those letters for me. You know? And sitting there saying, oh, that just sounds so good. They do such a wonderful job reading my letter to me. Right? I wouldn't uh, let somebody else read my letter. I didn't give my letter over to another soldier and say, hey, could you read my letter to me? Because it would sound a whole lot better if you read it to me. No. So why do we, why are we so satisfied with other people reading our love letter to us? I mean, it's good, it's okay to do that at times, but you need to read the letter for yourself first. Get in there and read the letter for yourself. There's some intimate things in here God has said to you, and he wants you to know about it. Read the word, get into the word, enjoy the word, feast upon the word. If you do, I'm telling you, a lot of the things that you're battling, a lot of things you say you just can't get through, I tell you, God will give you the ability to get through them if you'll get into the Word. Hallelujah. We're going to get ahead and close. I want you to remember this. Don't forget the message. Okay? Don't leave here and then forget what you have heard. But remember that the Word of God is very important. And we cannot skip getting into it. Again, if you don't know Christ, please get to know Him. Because He is the Lord. Bow your heads with me if you would, please. Brother Dennis, could you please pray and close us in prayer?